kind of like um if he were to be real he would be like a crypto sorry i saw something yeah you you could you would say that he would be a cryptid yeah. you you could say that because he's he's sort of um he he, he is along the lines of of the of the satyr of the pan of the, of, of the fawns Of, of other mythical creatures where you have the centaur, you have different hybrid creatures. So yes, he would, he would definitely be a cryptid. So, even in, even in traditions of native Americans where they see, oh yeah, a they, they see goats and, and deer that stand up and walk like humans, but they, they have goat legs and goat faces and human bodies. So absolutely, it's definitely a cryptid. Yeah, and uh, that's what I was going to say. Um, it reminded me of something. That's when I, st I really got interested in, back into the paranormal again was when I was in Puerto Rico. I, Puerto Rico can be a little scary because <laughs> there's a lot of cryptid. There's a lot of stuff over there. And since it's so um, not abandoned, but it's so see, a lot of people, a lot of the population lives in the coast of Puerto Rico and in the mountains, you'll have more encounters if you're brave enough to go and <laughs> and stay a night or two over there um, my mom lives in the mountains too so um I remember hearing a, um when I was over there and I was being more active in the Christian sense would go to church but they knew I liked the paranormal and I liked all this stuff mm -hmm. and there was a friend of my my grandma that they invited us over and they said well I actually work with helping people and i know not all of um Saint satanism is like that but for right him, he would look for the ones that were doing like bad stuff they well would, and that's the thing okay so um they would there they are demon like, worshipers yeah they there, would there are demon worshipers yeah. and those people satanists go that's not satanism that's I, not <laughs> They would go a little, little too far, and and he was helping like in a. Now I'm not. I don't remember his name anyway, but he told me to never say his name anywhere because he's under, mm -hmm. undercover, but he's a priest. So, <laughs> and he well, was, you, you know, <laughs> I, I always find that to be kind of funny because there are plenty of things that that. The, the Catholic yeah. priests have done That's that have very there's been a lot more abuse from Catholicism than there has been from Satanism. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, and so he he started to tell me that because I told him, well, do, what do you do then? He's like, well, I had because I guess he was trying to get me into like even more into church as a way like, oh, this is cool, so come this way, you know, like that, that kind of thing. So, um. He started to tell me that they actually go and investigate the undercover, and he'll be um, in these um, in their rituals. But he just looks for one if they take and they do kidnap people and do a lot of stuff over there, um, apart from it's religion. So the, he was helping with that stuff, and he actually got and he showed me video. He didn't show me anything bad because I was underage. <laughs> yeah. Like, I won't show you like the dark stuff because I don't want to spook you, but this is really what happens sometimes. It's rare. And he actually caught it and he had video. And I wish I could find it or I wish he would have gave me a copy or something, but it's he's he's dressed and he's with the detective and they're in the middle and they actually catch in the middle of the ritual they were about to like, because they would take virgin... Um, women or girls sure and they they call them and part part of the problem is with these and i, I have been witness to this too not yeah, in yeah. person but i i have i have seen this has happened where uh, these people will believe in <laughs> they believe in they believe the bible they believe the devil they believe that they're, they're getting their power from the actual enemy of jesus christ now that's not what real Satanism is. That's not, that's not Satanism. But these demon worshipers who believe by sacrificing humans and by, by harming living people is it's, it's cruel and it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's inhumane. So after he told me that, 
he began to tell me what he has like a whole I don't know if they still live there but he has like a whole collection of weird things he's caught on tape other than that stuff so I guess he does like his own thing and then um he began to tell me and I found this um skinwalkers do exist like, they do, do you, exist. He was told me, I'm like, how do you, well, I encountered a person that changed in front of me into, and I don't remember if it was a wolf or something. And I was like, <laughs> that's really cool and spooky. I had a friend, I have a friend rather, that had encountered something of the sort where it, this image was this person was walking to them and from them and away from them and trans it was it was I have not personally experienced that but I have I have seen I have friends who have my dad has a lot my dad I don't know what's with my family <laughs> I don't know if it's the contrast with my grandpa was a pastor and my 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 grandma was <laughs> The other stuff, <laughs> and I guess like, <laughs> sounds dreamy. <laughs> um, and I remember him telling me that he's seen like stuff like this, like just before I left Puerto Rico. It's not been that long. He saw what was like a a cat demon kind of thing. I don't know what follows my dad. <laughs> well, some people are more sensitive to it than others. Yeah. Like, um. What you know when I, when I I see energies I see spirits I see I oftentimes will when I see things I will I'll be looking at what I think is a flesh and blood person but it's not corporeal sometimes it's that it's so solid and real that I think other people have seen them too but they haven't now as far as like the cryptids uh, I I have not encountered those but I will tell you an alien spacecraft story which is not really quite. Christmas, but it is, um, you know, it, it's, it's, we it's along the, that. <laughs> so this did not happen to me again. It did not happen to me, okay. but years ago when my, when I lived in, in the Midwest, my parents and my sister were driving to church. Now I had stayed home for whatever reason, but I was, they were driving to church or driving from church. It was way out in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of, middle of nothing. And uh, my father was driving. My mother was in the middle. My sister was on, on the outside. They had a, had a truck. This triangular shape illuminate, illuminated, illuminated the road uh, above them. And my sister sticks her head out trying to see what this is. And my mother panics. No, no, don't look at that. Don't look at Maybe it might be a government experiment. Don't look at it. Just pretend you don't see it. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Stop it. Stop it. But my sister went, no, 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 I have to see what this is. I have to see. So they get up to the, the bigger part of the road. Now, this is in the, in the middle of, right on the border of Kansas and Missouri. So they get up to the, a bigger road, and this triangular craft turns on its side and then out like a light. It's, it, it, shoots, it shoots quickly away, but it's, it's, it's faster than, and there's no, there was no sound barrier that would allow it to, so yes, those things do exist. Yeah. Cryptids, spacecraft, aliens, time travel, it's all real. Yeah, I know people have a hard time swallowing that, but for people like us, that's, <laughs> it's like, it's real. My dad grew up with that. I grew up with him. Tough. I have one really creepy that's on my channel, but I experienced, uh, see, I don't know if it's just a dream or I actually was taken <laughs> sure it was very vivid the dream um started off <laughs> <laughs> and then after this i'll put in that little cryptid video i saw and then we can end with that so i don't take up too much time um i was about four five and i was living in puerto rico at a time and we were living in, right in front of the beach um so they say there's a lot of activity in that place now mm -hmm. that I now that after me being at this age is when I figured that out, but then I didn't know that. Um, where we're living at, the windows we have aren't really sealed. Like there's enough room to put a one hand in. That they're they're open. So I'm just going to sleep. I remember dreaming of me being a young woman already, 
and now I'm five. <laughs> so I don't know how that's going on, but that's what me in the dream. And I remember seeing myself in a green dress, opening balcony doors, and then after that, it like snapped to another part of the dream that I'm everything's dark, my eyes are closed, and I see and feel I mean I see I feel like the metal, like if I was on top of a doctor's metal bed. I'm like, why is it so cold? Why is it so hard? And I'm doing this and I can't move too much or I barely can move and I just feel like a slit or like a knife from my belly button down. And wow. It doesn't hurt, but it, I could feel the opening. I'm five. <laughs> I've never been to surgery. This is a memory I still can remember. And as they do that, I'm like freaking out. And I open my eyes in the dream. And I see, just like the movie, three beings, big eyes, gray aliens. And I look like this, and I give out the biggest bloody murder scream and it's really late at night my dad just runs to the room with my mom and my little brother's in the bunk bed on top and and they're all freaking out like what's wrong what's wrong and I'm like telling my dad there's aliens and I'm like pointing at the window I remember and my dad's like the first thing he tells me like okay think of Bugs Bunny <laughs> think of your favorite cartoon <laughs> think of that think of that and I like that calmed me down and then I'm like why did I dream about that that was the, it was so vivid that was like the first that's how my journey started <laughs> I, guess, I would say that I would say you had an encounter that's what I would intuitively say yeah because my dad after years of me talking to him he's had it my mom's had it in the mountains like it's really weird. Our story, backstory, if you, it's it's really unbelievable. <laughs> it's very strange. That's fabulous. <laughs> so, so we could end <laughs> the video. Sure. Well, let's just wish everybody a happy Yule, a happy Krampusnacht, a happy Saturnalia, a happy Christmas, a happy Hanukkah, a happy Kwanzaa. Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy Ramadan. I think that's in there too. That's Happy right. holidays. <laughs> so, uh, before we go, here's one last video and uh, connected to that, I hope. And it ends like in a fun note. It, let me, how do I share this again? Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I don't know if you've seen this. Oh, I think I have, but I love to see it again. <laughs> I find it cute. I don't find it really that creepy, but it, it reminds me of a Christmas elf. So I'm like, let me put that in there. So this was in 2019. I used to think this was like some person, but more the more I look at it, the more I rewatch it, it's unexplainable. So let me just. Mm -hmm. That's strange. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Looks like Dobie Elf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again um, for Richard Leo. I'm sorry for like the whole me and the clouds head kind of day. No, you're <laughs> lovely. It's so lovely. Thank you for having me on your show. I enjoy you. Thank you for everything. You you really are fabulous. Thank you. And you guys, thank you for watching again. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, go to Rich Leo's um, YouTube channel. He does. Yeah, TheGentlemanPsychic.com. You can find me under the Gentleman Psychic. Oh, the Gentleman Psychic.com. The Gentleman Psychic on YouTube. Richard Leo Lillard. Anywhere else you can find me. If you look for Richard Leo Lillard, you can find me. Anyway, I'm easy. <laughs> All right. Thank you again. And thank you guys for watching and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>